The Lie Tree, a children's fantasy novel penned by Frances Hardinge in 2015, unfolds against the backdrop of Victorian-era Great Britain, a society steeped in patriarchy and scientific pursuit. The story centers around Faith Sunderly, a young teenager whose life takes a dramatic turn when her family relocates from Kent to the remote island of Vane. As they settle into their new surroundings, Faith becomes determined to unravel the mystery surrounding her father's untimely demise and delve deeper into the realm of natural sciences that he so passionately pursued. It is soon revealed that the Sunderly family's abrupt move was an attempt to escape a growing scandal surrounding Faith's father and his groundbreaking scientific discoveries. As Faith embarks on her quest for truth, she stumbles upon a remarkable and enchanted tree that feeds on whispered lies, transforming them into undeniable truths. Fueled by her desire to restore her family's reputation and secure their fortune, Faith sets out to harness the power of the magical tree. The narrative begins with a dreary voyage across the English Channel, as the Sunderly family ventures towards the island of Vane. Faith, a reluctant participant in the journey, accompanies her parents, with her father, Reverend Erasmus, ostensibly assisting an archaeological dig on the island. Set in the 1860s, this era is marked by the clash between the scientific community and their staunch religious beliefs, particularly in relation to the controversial theory of evolution. Reverend Erasmus gains attention for his discovery of a fossilized winged man, further igniting the debates surrounding science and faith. As the Sunderly family settles into their new home, Faith's inquisitive nature leads her to question the true purpose of their relocation. She suspects that the dig site serves as a mere facade, masking the inquiries into her father's fossil's authenticity. However, tragedy strikes when Reverend Erasmus is found dead, prompting Faith's mother and uncle to suppress any speculation of suicide from reaching the public eye. Undeterred, Faith adamantly believes that her father's demise was not self-inflicted and resolves to uncover the circumstances surrounding his mysterious death. Faith embarks on a journey that retraces her father's footsteps, starting with his most recent discovery. The Lie Tree introduces an intriguing specimen, a peculiar tree whose fruit possesses the power to induce vivid visions in those who consume it. Even more peculiar is the tree's unique condition for flowering and bearing fruit, it thrives on whispered lies, which must be spread by the whisperer to others. Driven by her unwavering conviction that her father was murdered, Faith takes advantage of this mystical tree. In an act of defiance, Faith crafts a lie that her father's ghost haunts the island, enraged by the villagers' persistent appeals to the coroner to determine if his death was a suicide. Instead of accepting suicide as the truth, Faith plants the idea that the archaeological site holds buried treasure left by a former smuggler, insinuating that someone else coveted it. As Faith nurtures these fabricated tales, they spread like wildfire throughout the island, igniting chaos and violence among its inhabitants as she observes their irrational behavior. The Lie Tree becomes a powerful tool for Faith to unleash her most malicious impulses. However, the narrative presents her use of the tree as a distinctly human response to her circumstances. Having spent her 14 years being treated as incompetent, weak, and foolish whenever she expressed herself intelligently, Faith resents the gender expectations that society imposes on young girls to be docile and silent. This fuels her actions. For instance, Faith torments a young servant girl who initially suggested her father's suicide, and she coerces a village boy into assisting her in unraveling the mystery of her father's death. In one of her most alarming schemes, she manipulates the islanders into inflicting harm upon Miss Hunter, the post office supervisor. The morality of Faith's actions remains ambiguous, she causes harm within her community, but through this, she gains access to conversations and encounters she would typically be denied, exposing her to the darker aspects of her seemingly polite world. Consequently, Faith molds her sense of self into a more ideal form, transcending the oppressive gender norms that pervade her society. While her actions come at a cost to those around her, they enable her to perceive and comprehend the world with greater clarity, ultimately shaping her identity in defiance of societal constraints. This newfound freedom of self-determination also sharpens Faith's ability to identify and challenge the oppression faced by others. For instance, she witnesses her left-handed brother being forced to keep his dominant arm in a sling due to a religious belief that favors the right hand. Faith's journey leads her to uncover the truth behind her father's murder, revealing Agatha, a brilliant but marginalized scientist and naturalist, as the culprit. 
Ironically, Faith feels a sense of empathy towards Agatha, as she too has experienced the same misogyny and oppression throughout her young life. However, while Faith seeks to understand and navigate the complexities of the external world, Agatha's downfall lies in her decision to pursue wealth through murder and stealing the lie tree from Erasmus. As a consequence, she succumbs to malaria and spirals into deep alcoholism, ultimately choosing to end her own life. This ambiguous closure triggers a sense of empathy within Faith, as she recognizes the potential consequences of following a path of malice and resentment, realizing that Agatha's fate foreshadows her own potential future. Instead of treading down that destructive path, Faith reconciles with her mother and brother, embracing the values of her family and internalizing them to shape her identity. Through this process, she finds a semblance of freedom and self-determination, understanding that salvation from the oppressive conditions of any society across different eras lies not in erasing or seeking revenge for an unfair past, but in accepting it and learning to optimize one's life based on the opportunities available. Frances Hardinge's novel, The Lie Tree, suggests that the path to liberation involves acknowledging and adapting to the circumstances one faces, using them as stepping stones to forge a meaningful existence. It highlights the importance of embracing one's identity, finding solace within the support of loved ones, and striving to carve out a life that aligns with one's values and aspirations. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.